Good morning, welcome to the CABE webinar Wednesday for the 26th of May. Today we are looking at an introduction to the Society for the Environment in registrations. Um, these are the additional ones that they have recently launched. For those of you who don't know already, my name is Jordan and I'm the Regional Student Services Coordinator here at CABE and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. We do like to make these interactive, so we do encourage you to send in any questions you may have. If you're joining us live, you can do this via the questions tab appearing on your screen. If you're catching up on YouTube, feel free to email us at webinars at cbuildy.com or you can tweet us using the hashtag CABCPD. So this morning, I'm joined by our head of membership, Ian McLaughlin. Um, so he's going to take you through the new registrations that we have recently joined with the Society for the Environment this morning. Um, if you joined us back in March, he did also take us through the Engineering Council ones as well. So that is up on the YouTube channel for those of you that are interested. So Ian joined us as the head of membership um, last summer, actually, so it's just short of a year now, um, after having arrived back from New Zealand. He's experienced in customer service, business development and working with non-profit membership organisations. Ian has a strong background in people and change management with professional training and coaching skills. In New Zealand, he was training and development manager of the National Restaurant Association, a position that encompassed mem membership training for the industry, apprenticeships and management. Whilst in this role, Ian was responsible for the design, implementation and quality assurance of all training. And before his move to New Zealand, Ian was a quality assurer for a large national apprenticeship provider and managed the quality of academic delivery within a large team of assessors. I'm going to hand over to Ian now. He's actually sat next to me, so bear with us two seconds while we change over the presentation. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Thanks very much for uh, attending. I hope everyone's well. <clears throat> and as Jordan said, I'm going to be taking us through the Society for the Environment registrations available uh, to CABE members, how to go about registering, what's required, eligibility criteria, um, and just cover off all different parts of the levels and grades that we have available. So. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. Okay. So we will cover an overview of the different grades available. We will go through the competencies and registration process for chartered environmentalist. The same for registered environmental practitioner and the same for the registered environmental technician. I'll also go through the fees, uh, the Society for the Environment's Code of Professional Conduct and detail the first steps of how to apply. And I hope to get through that nice and quickly so I can take any questions from you. So as Jordan said, please do pop them in the question box and um, I'll be able to answer those at the end of the presentation. So at the beginning of this year, January 2021, the Society for the Environment introduced a new level of registration, RMP, the Registered Environmental Practitioner. Um, historically, they've all, always had Chartered Environmentalist and Registered Environmental Technician, and for a number of years, CAVE has been delivering Chartered Environmentalist registrations, um, and we've now decided to open it up and offer the full suite of registrations now that there are three, which is great news because it means that we can offer a environmental registration across every level of CAVE membership. So we've got around 46 chartered environmentalists within CABE at the moment, a few applicants on the journey. 
Um, and as part of this process, we applied for the license to deliver the new grade and registered environmental technician. We took the opportunity <clears throat> to completely revise um, the documentation and registration process for chartered environmentalists as well. So we'll go through that. And we're now opening it up to all CADE members that we can accept applications for all three levels of registration. Right, so a quick overview of these grades. Chartered environmentalists, the highest of the environmental registrations available through CABE and the Society for the Environment. This is for uh, leaders and, and visionaries of environmentalism. Uh, and specifically, eligibility wise, for those with knowledge and competence at around level seven, a master's level. Um, and to apply, they must be a CABE Chartered Building Engineer or Chartered Fellow. The new level of registration, Registered Environmental Practitioner, is for those with knowledge and competence at level five. So in plain language, that's an HND around about, uh, and they would normally have three years relevant environmental experience. And the registered environmental technician, uh, the entry level grade of registration is at level three of knowledge and competence, and they will have normally been working in a relevant role for around two years. Now, the Society for the Environment and CABE um, have designed a process where actually eligibility criteria is assessed <clears throat> on an individual case by case basis because it is recognized that not if you don't have a master's degree that doesn't mean that actually you might not have the level of knowledge and competence to level seven so in order to uh, apply for chartered environmentalist which is where we're going to start today the process is that the applicant you uh, complete an initial application form and that includes an eligibility check and I'll go through that in further detail a little bit later and along with your CV copies of qualifications a professional development plan and a CPD record and those two things the professional development plan and the CPD record need to display relevance to environmentalism uh, this is then sent over to us we check it and assess it here within the professional review team uh, in the membership department and if eligible we will then invite you to continue and complete the competency review form the competency review form um, details the society for the environment competencies required for chartered environmentalists and an applicant is required um, to submit written work around each of those competencies detailing how they meet them once that is then completed and returned to CABE, we will send that off to our trained CABE Society for the Environment panelists to assess. And it'll be sent to two or three of our assessors who will go through your written work, go through your um, supplementary documentation, CV, quals, and that sort of thing. And if everything is in order, we'll then invite you to proceed to a professional review interview. Now, those same panelists that have looked at those written materials and supplementary documentations will um, do your interview. And we hold these online at the moment um, and we, we're finding this very successful and we'll schedule that at a time that is suitable for everybody involved. The PRI discusses obviously all the documentation, your written work, and of course the relevant codes of conduct, CABE and SOCM. And if the PRI is successful, then CAVE will register the applicant with the Society for the Environment as a chartered environmentalist. There it is in flowchart form. Um, and Jordan will be sharing these slides out after the session today so you can refer back to it. Um, just a note if at any stage through the application, um, you or the applicant is unsuccessful we recommend that actually you shouldn't reapply again 
before six months and that's generally because if you are unsuccessful at interview or assessment stage there will be some feedback provided to you of things that you should and could do in order to improve and, and meet the competencies required so we usually like to allow a length of time uh, between those things okay so you as an applicant need to demonstrate how you meet the SOCEMV CEMV competencies uh, and we're going to go through those now and just to note there's a the, the way that it's set out is there's the competency and then some bullet points and details underneath about how advising us how that competence could be met now you as a as an applicant you're not expected that to have to demonstrate all of those things because your application would end up being a, a full ream of paper long but nonetheless you must show how you meet all of the 12 key competencies so like the CABE framework and the engineering council framework it, it's in uh, alphabetical, alphabetical order and we're going to start with group a which is the application knowledge and understanding of the environment to further the aims of sustainability. Now, this is uh, covering the details between your professional activity and the environment and exploring your underpinning knowledge of the principles and sustainability. A1, have understanding and underpinning knowledge of sustainability principles and management of the environment. This normally includes the ability to critically analyze and interpret, evaluate complex environmental information to determine sustainable causes of action, understand the wider environmental context in which the area of study or work is being undertaken, understand the importance of maintaining, enhancing natural cycles of biodiversity in achieving sustainability, and reformulate and use practical, conceptual or technological understanding of environmental management to develop ways forward in complex situations. I'm going to pause. You will note as we are going through these different grades, CM, RMF, PRMF, Tech, that there are some similarities, but actually, as I mentioned earlier, with chartered environmentalists being leaders and visionaries, you'll note in the competencies the wording changes. So here we've got critically analyze and complex situations. These are very high standard, high end competencies to be met. A2, apply environmental knowledge and principles in pursuit of sustainable environmental management and professional practice. So, this could normally include the ability to demonstrate how to contextualize and address problematic solutions that involve many interacting environmental factors, determine and use appropriate methodologies and approaches, critically evaluate actions, methods, and results and their short and long-term implications, actively learn from results to improve future environmental solutions and approaches and build best practice. Negotiate the necessary contractual and agreed arrangements with other stakeholders. Heading into A3, competence A3, analyze and evaluate problems from an environmental perspective. Develop practical, sustainable solutions and anticipate environmental trends to develop practical solutions. So this could, could be met by um, the analysis and evaluation of problems, some of which will be complex from an environmental perspective, working sometimes with incomplete data. Demonstrate self-direction and originality in tackling and addressing problems. Demonstrate a critical awareness of current environmental problems and anticipate the impact of future environmental trends. And finally, critically analyze and embrace new environmental information and seek new knowledge, skills and competence in the field of environment based on the most recent scientific, social, economic, cultural and technical developments and understanding. Wow, what a mouthful. What that is saying harps back to me saying that chartered environmentalists are, are leaders and visionaries. They are uh, researching, they are understanding and they are keeping up to date with the most recent going on in the wider 
aspects of environmentalism, not just within the, the, the building engineering specialisms. Okay, B, leading sustainable management of the environment. So B1 is about promoting behavioural change and cultural change by influencing others to secure environmental improvements that go beyond minimum statutory requirements. So it's not just about meeting the standard, it's about um, beating it, exceeding uh, the, the standard in environmental improvement. Right, develop good practices. Uh, by actively learning from results to improve future environmental solutions and approaches. Help a mentor support others to understand the wider environmental picture. Really key point to that competence there. Advocate sustainability concerns and environmental issues. Encourage others to actively contribute to environmental protection and sustainability. So, the chartered environmentalist is, is out there and encouraging others to understand, take note of the environmental issues, how to protect the environment, improve sustainability. B2, promote a strategic environmental approach. Demonstrate self-direction and originality when developing strategies for sustainable development and environmental improvement. Not just following others' work here, they're developing original strategies. Actively collaborate and engage with other disciplines and stakeholders and encourage multi and interdisciplinary approaches on environmental challenges. Identify any constraints but exploit opportunities for the development and transfer of environmentally appropriate technologies. Identifies areas of uncertainty and risk including health and safety and of course environmental, technical, business and reputational risks. B3, demonstrate leadership and management skills. Uh, this normally includes the ability to exercise autonomy and judgment across environmental and sustainability issues, motivate and influence others uh, to agree and deliver environmental objectives, identify individual needs, plan for their development, assess individual performance and provide feedback reflect on outcomes, identify and pursue improvements on previous practice. Really nice one there. I think we should all be doing that, reflecting on what we've done before and thinking about how we can improve and do it better next time. Okay, communication and interpersonal skills. Demonstrate leadership and management skills. Um, could be met and demonstrated by delivering presentations to a wide spectrum of audiences leading and sustaining environmental debates, contributing to and chairing meetings and discussions, and identifying, engaging with and responding to a range of key stakeholders. C2, the ability to liaise with, negotiate with, handle conflict, and advise others in individual and or group environments, either as a leader or a member. Most of the time, as a chartered environmentalist, they would be a leader. Understand the motives and attitudes of others and be aware of the different roles. Influence decision making. Seek the opinions and contributions of others. Promote development opportunities and activities and champion group decisions and manage conflict for the achievement of common goals and objectives. D is about the personal commitment to professional standards, recognizing your obligation to society, the profession, and the environment. D1, encourage others to promote and advance a sustainable and resilient approach by understanding their responsibility for environmental damage and their responsibility for improvement of the environment. Inform and encourage others to consider environmental sustainability issues and the consequence of their decisions and actions. D2, take responsibility for personal development and work towards and secure change and improvements for a sustainable future. Recognize the value of CPD to the profession. And again, in terms of environmental registration with Cade and the Society for the Environment, the CPD should be just that, um, based on and around environmentalism and, and all its facets, you know, sustainability and so on. Uh, a chartered environmentalist should have a strong desire to learn, continuous professional development, uh, value and actively pursue uh, personal professional development. D3, 
D3, uh, demonstrate an understanding of environmental ethical dilemmas. Understand the nature of professional responsibility. Identify the environmental ethical elements in a decision. What are the considerations? What's the justification? Where are the ethics within that decision? Address and resolve problems arising from questionable environmental practice. So that's about, again, be, being out there at the forefront. If, if you see or spot or, or are in a discussion and something's not right, you know, question it. D4, comply with the relevant codes of conduct and practice, including CABE Code of Professional Conduct, the CABE Guide to Ethical Professionalism, get, get, yeah, that one, CABE Guide to Ethical Professionalism, and of course, the Society for the Environment Professional Code of Conduct, which I'm going to go through uh, in a few moments. Right, so let's have a look at the eligibility. So the two part process is that you would complete the initial application form, which includes the guidance. Let's have a look at that one. Uh, and then obviously follow on to the competency review. So you can see here the eligibility criteria is done on a self-assessment process uh, and is scored. So looking at the sentence underneath eligibility self-assessment as a guide, for a chartered environmentalist applicant, the candidate should be able to demonstrate a minimum of 12 units of knowledge and or experience. Now, under normal circumstances, that would be a level seven qualification and at least four years relevant experience. However, as I mentioned earlier, these are all individually assessed. So you can see that if somebody had a master's degree, in uh, sustainability for argument's sake, uh, they get eight points straight away. And then moving on down into the relevant work-based practice points, if they then have four years relevant experience, they would enter four in there, four in there, eight in there, and that equals 12, which means that they are eligible to apply for um, chartered environmentalists. So this is a self-assessment. A nice key thing to note is that not all um, jobs within the specific pr profession of building engineering will be 100% focused on environmentalism and or sustainability, but it is recognized that actually a portion of your role or that role um, will, will be focused on environmental and sustainability. So looking at this example here, if you're a sustainability manager uh, for, for that uh, hypothetical company, then of course, all your years experience are 100% relevant to your work-based practice points. However, if you're a, a surveyor in building control or, or another specific job title that doesn't necessarily relate fully, then whatever portion of your, your role is focused on that you can use. So in this example, 25% of this applicant's eight years in the job is two points worth of experience. Another nice thing um, with the Society for the Environment that's important to note, it's not just remunerated work that they can consider as relevant work-based practice. So volunteering, academic research, all those different types of vocational is probably a better word. Vocational experience can be considered as work-based practice. Um, the rest of it is personal information, listing professional qualifications, employment. The application must be sponsored uh, by two people. Ideally, they would be chartered environmentalists. Um, if not, we would expect that they are CABE members, um, or if that's a struggle, can be line management, uh, HR management, or another professional person. Complete a professional statement, tell us who you are and, and what you've done specifically around your environmental work. The CPD and the PDP record that I told you about, and then send it off to us, and that will be initially assessed. I'm just head back and show you briefly the competency review form. I've lost my mouse. Oh, there it is. Okay, 
So this is just where you would complete your written part of the application once we've assessed and sent this across to you. It's the competencies that we've just gone through together. Um, you'll recognise critically analyse and complex solutions. You need to provide three to 400 words detailing how you meet these competencies on each of the 12. Okay, so it's not much to see, it's a blank document at the moment, but once completed, that would be full of your work detailing how you meet the competencies required to become a chartered environmentalist. Uh, that then goes off to your sponsors to be signed. They confirm that it's your own work and they know who you are. Sign it and then send it off to us. At that stage, as you know, we then send that off for assessment. Okay, so that's chartered environmentalist in a nutshell. These will get a little bit faster as we go through because there are some similarities. So now we're going to look at RMP. What's great about registered environmental practitioner is that it is open to all levels of CABE membership as long as that applicant meets the eligibility criteria. It does not matter which level of CABE membership they hold. Whereas for chartered environmentalist, it's chartered building engineer and fellow only. Okay, so the one key difference um, with this route to registration is that in the majority of cases, an interview is not necessary. This can be and should be a desktop assessment and an interview is not always necessary. Uh, that comes with a caveat that sometimes an interview can be called, but I'll explain that in a mo. So anyway, same same sort of situation complete the initial application form including eligibility check send us your cv copies of quals the professional development plan and cpd record relating to environmentalism and then send it to us we will assess your eligibility to apply for this registration once that's all gone through we'll send you that competency review form we just looked at the cm one i'll show you the rmp one in a moment um, and then you complete that written assessment, complete that work and send it back to us. We then send it off to two or three of our CABE Society for the Environment panelists to assess. And if they assess your written work as being completely satisfactory, having met the Society for the Environment standards, there will be no requirement for an interview. If that you've met most of them and the, the panel feel that a little little chat would, would help them to confirm and, and draw a few more things out of you, then they can request a short PRI interview. Or of course, unfortunately, you could also be unsuccessful. But let's go with you've been successful without the need for an interview. At that stage, you then will be registered by CABE as a RMP, Registered Environmental Practitioner. Um, there it is again in flowchart that will be sent out. Um, and just let's focus on this very last bottom right hand box. If the panel feel that further clarification is required from the desktop assessment, a PRI can be scheduled and held. The outcome will, of course, either be successful or un unsuccessful. There's no sort of um, conditional. Uh, awards like like CABE membership. Okay, so a registered environmental practitioner also has 12 competencies that they must demonstrate and meet. We have a similar layout. There's guidance notes, un guidance notes underneath each competence. Really what we need is for you to demonstrate you meet A1, the competence. The rest is just ideas and notes. Um, you don't need to meet all those elements. So we will see some wording changes here. So we've gone from leaders and visionaries to now practitioners, you know, um, managers and Im implementers, shall we say. So A1, have underpinning knowledge of sustainability principles in the management of the environment. Normally including the ability to analyze, interpret and evaluate environmental information. Quick pause to um, reflect on chartered environmentalists that was critical analysis. So you'll see the, the change in wording that is uh, relevant to the lower level of registration. 
understand the environmental context in which the area of study or work is being undertaken. Understand the importance of maintaining and enhancing natural cycles and biodiversity in achieving sustainability. Use practical, conceptual or technological understanding of environmental management to develop weight forward. So they're using their understanding. A2, apply environmental knowledge and principles in pursuit of sustainable environmental management in professional practice. Use broad knowledge and concepts to address problematic solutions that involve many interacting environmental factors. Use, and where necessary, design relevant methodologies for environmental management. Evaluate actions, evaluate methods and results, and understand their implications. Use knowledge and understanding to improve environmental practice. Understand the necessary contracts and implement contractual arrangements with relevant stakeholders. A3 is about analysis and evaluation of problems from an environmental perspective and to develop practical sustainable solutions. Analyze and evaluate problems from an environmental perspective. Address problems and find solutions with minimal supervision. Demonstrate broad understanding of current environmental problems. Identify and apply new environmental information using knowledge, skills and competencies in the environmental field. The Bs, support sustainable management of the environment. So not leading, supporting. B1, promote behavioral and cultural change by influencing other sectors to secure environmental improvements that go beyond minimum statutory regular relations, re statutory requirements, excuse me. Implement and review good practice by actively learning from results to improve fruit future environmental solutions and approaches. Advise and support the sectors to understand the environmental context. Raise sustainability concerns and issues and advocate the potential benefits and opportunities. Encourage others in the sector to actively contribute to environmental protection and sustainability. B2, implement and adhere to a strategic environmental approach. Plan for project implementation. So CM was developing the project. RFP, they're, they're implementing, planning for the project implement, implementation. Demonstrate self-direction and identify potential strategies for sustainable development and environmental improvements. Promote collaborative working and identify approaches to address environmental challenges. Identify opportunities to implement and transfer environmentally appropriate technology. Implement measures to assess and mitigate risk, including health and safety, environmental, technical, business, and reputational. B3, determine, allocate, and supervise tasks. Exercise autonomy and judgment across common environmental and sustainability issues. Motivate and influence others to deliver environmental objectives. Assess performance and development, plan for individual needs, and implement continuous improvement. Uh, communication and interpersonal skills is group C in the competence for our MVP. C1, communicate the environmental case confidently, clearly and autonomously and competently. Uh, deliver presentations, contribute to debates, contribute to meetings, identify, engage and respond to a range of key stakeholders. C2, the ability to liaise with, negotiate with, handle conflict and advise others in individual or group environments. So seek opinions and contributions of others, work collaboratively. Consider the motives and attitudes of others and be aware of different roles. Contribute to decision making and support group decisions. Exchange information and promote, promote advice. Identify development opportunities and activities and manage conflict for the achievement of common goals. Group D, commitment. Commitment to professional standards, obligation to society, the profession and the environment. So, a registered environmental practitioner should be able to demonstrate how they promote and advance a sustainable and resilient approach by understanding their personal responsibility for environmental damage and improvement. So identify and address environmental sustainability issues and consider the consequence of decisions and actions. 
Take responsibility for professional competence. So this is the CPD competence again. Recognize the value of CPD to themselves and to the profession. Value and actively pursue professional development and maintain their competence. D, identify and work to resolve environmental ethical conflicts. Consistently demonstrate standards of good practice. Address and resolve problems arising from an inadequate environmental practice. And D4, comply, demonstrate compliance with the relevant codes. Again, CABE Code of Professional Conduct, CABE Guide to Ethical Professionalism and the Society for the Environment Code of Professional Conduct. Okay, so we'll pop into this document here for the registered environmental practitioner and have a look at the eligibility criteria. Again, this is open to all grades of CABE membership as long as they can meet the eligibility criteria. So we've got the same sort of system, it's scored, um, but you can see like masters and PhD is, is removed and that's because at that level you'd expect that they'd be going for chartered environmentalist. And there is a uh, lower amount of points required to meet the eligibility criteria. So normally candidates would be demonstrating eight units uh, in the scoring system of knowledge and or experience. So that's normally um, a level five qualification. So let's call it a level five um, NVQ or vocational qualification, or for example, um, a higher national diploma. That could be at level five, that, that is five points. And normally three years of relevant experience equals eight. Same way, you fill in the form the same way, list your qualifications, give them the points, list your experience, including voluntary um, academic research uh, and create the matrix and score it as a self-assessment. The rest of the form is the same personal details, sponsors details, uh, personal statement, development plan, CPD, um, and away we go, send it off to CABE. And very, very briefly, I'll click into this one, but we've just been through the competencies. You've seen this form, but for CM before, it's the same. It's got a box where you write your written words for each of the competence. One thing to note, um, for the eagle-eyed amongst you, the CM form required three to four hundred words against each competency. For the RMP, uh, being a lower level of registration, the word, the, the suggested word count is lower, two to three hundred words. Um, and again, this is normally assessed as a desktop application to registration. An interview uh, may not be required. Okay, RMF Tech are the designatory letters for registered environmental technician. So not any different other than the level here to RMFP. Desktop, PRI is not necessary, can be um, called on if required. Initial application step is the same. We'll go through the application form. The eligibility criteria is again reduced, as you'll see, and we'll go through the competencies, which again is reduced um, from level. Send us your CV, copies of quals, PDP, CPD, and let's get you on the journey uh, to environmental registration. You can review that um, when that's sent out later. We're going to go straight in to the registered environmental technician competencies. Set out in the same way. Um, it's got the bullet points underneath, but you need to meet the main competence, and here they are. So, A1, the competence is the same. Having underpinning knowledge of sustainability principles in the management of the environment. However, for the level of registered environmental technician, they are uh, normally including the ability to be aware of environmental context. So let's just flash back here. Chartered environmentalists were critically analysing. Registered environmental practitioners were analysing. And registered environmental technicians need to be aware of these things. So the registered environmental 
technicians are usually the doers. We've got the leader, the visionary, the implementer, the manager, and we're up to the doer now. Be aware of the environmental context in which the area of study or work is being undertaken. Be aware of the importance of maintaining and enhancing natural cycles and biodiversity in achieving sustainability. Analyze and select appropriate techniques, procedures, and methods in pursuit of more sustainable solutions. Have a practical understanding of the constraints and implementation of well-defined tasks in environmental context. So for anyone here um, that, that's uh, got any sort of assessment ex experience against these standards, you'll see that the level that they need to meet in their written work and how, how they'll meet that's quite different to practitioner and chartered. Uh, A2, apply environmental knowledge and principles in pursuit of sustainable environmental management. Address situations that involve interacting environmental factors. Identify, select and use appropriate skills, methods and procedures. Review the effectiveness of these methods and actions used and learn from the results to improve future environmental solutions. Work within the necessary contractual and agreed arrangements with other stakeholders. Uh, analyze and evaluate problems. This one says identify the problem that while well-defined may be complex and non-routine from an environmental perspective. Demonstrate an awareness of the complexity of current environmental issues. So they need to, they need to be aware of these things. Demonstrate commitment to tackling and addressing the environmental issues. Identify, adapt, and use appropriate methods and skills to develop practical, sustainable solutions. Actively support sustainable management of the environment. Uh, work reliably and autonomously, but within the defined parameters to the appropriate codes of practice, serving as an example for others. So implement good practices by actively learning from results to improve future environmental solutions. Support others and try and understand um, the wider environmental picture. Promote sustainability concerns and environmental issues. Encourage others to actively contribute to the environmental protection and sustainability. B2 is take responsibility for planning and developing some well-defined tasks. Demonstrate self-direction. Uh, for undertaking some well-defined tasks and try and achieve sustainable development. Work with other disciplines and stakeholders to tackle environmental challenges. Implement and transfers where appropriate, environmentally appropriate technology. Be aware of and contribute to the management of the risk. B3, determine, allocate and supervise tasks. Exercise autonomy and judgment within broad but generally well-defined parameters across a range of environmental and sustainability issues. Motivate and influence others to deliver environmental objectives. Contribute to the identification of individual needs. Plan for their development and the assessment on an individual performance and seek improvements on previous practice. Communication skills, interpersonal skills, group C. Communicate the environmental case. Present information customized to different audiences. Contribute to debates by listening and responding to others. Engage with a range of stakeholders. Uh, C2, the ability to liaise with and negotiate with, handle conflict and advise others in individual or group activities. Inform decision making. Seek opinions and contributions of others. Promote sustainable development opportunities and activities and handle conflicts within groups and tasks. Personal commitment. D1, promote and advance a sustainable and resilient approach by understanding their responsibility for environmental damage and improvement. Inform and encourage others to consider environmental sustainability issues and the consequence of their decisions and actions. You'll notice all environmental registrations with Society for the Environment, it's expected that you are an advocate uh, for environmentalism and sustainability. D2, take responsibility for personal development and work towards and secure change and improvements for a sustainable future. So CPD, um, 
have a strong desire to learn, value and actively pursue personal professional development. The Ds, again, the same, understand the nature of professional responsibility. Identify the environmental ethical elements within decisions. Address and resolve problems arising from questionable environmental practice. It's about demonstrating the understanding of environmental ethical dilemmas. Finally, D4, comply with the codes of conduct and practice. So what, I'm just going to look at the eligibility. I won't show you the other one because it's it's the same. Uh, so a bit of a zoom here. We've got five points or units. Apologies, units. Five units um, needed for an applicant to be considered eligible in the self-assessment eligibility criteria. So remember right back at the beginning, RM Tech was um, geared for level three. So if someone's got a, a level three qualification or, or above four, um, then they get the appropriate amount of points you can see on your screen. And normally they will have two years relevant experience. Again, like the other two levels of registrations, all individually assessed. Um, get your application over to us and we'll do the assessment for you. Right, so all Society for the Environment registrants with CABE, as well as complying with the CABE Code of Professional Conduct and the CABE Guide to Ethical Professionalism, must commit to complying with the Society for the Environment Code of Professional Conduct. And here it is. Act in accordance with the best principles for the mitigation of environmental harm and the enhancement of environmental quality. Strive to ensure that the uses of natural resources are fair and sustainable, taking account of the needs of a diverse society. Use my skills and experience to serve the needs of the environment and society. Serve as an example to others for responsible environmental behaviour. Not engage in conduct involving dishonesty, fraud, misrepresentation or discrimination. And commit to maintaining my personal professional competence and strive to uphold the integrity and competence of my profession. And on the forms, during the application, on both forms, in fact, when you're signing, there's a declaration that you are agreeing upon becoming a registrant uh, to abide by this code of professional conduct. OK, that's the overview of the grades and the application process. We're now just going to go through the fees so you know what to expect. We'll start with Chartered Environmentalist. Uh, when you complete your self-eligibility uh, self assessment and send it over to us, there's an initial assessment fee uh, that you will be invoiced of £25. Upon successful um, assessment, you'll then be issued the competency review. Once that is completed and sent back to us, there's an assessment fee invoiced of £145 that will be then sent off for assessment. And if successful and invited to interview, the PRI fee is £100. Again, if successful and proceeding to registration, the registration fee for the Society for the Environment is £120. And then once registered, that takes care of the, the first year, but maintaining your registration, there's an annual subscription fee, and the annual subscription fee for CM is £75. Uh, and for those chartered environmentalists that are with us today, that have been with CAPE historically, that you'll note that there's a change to your annual subscription fee. A good change. Uh, RMP. Uh, the initial assessment fee is the same. Uh, the fees are lower in general for the lower grades of registration. So the competency review assessment, because they're assessing less words, is um, slightly more cost effective at £125. Now, this is only if applicable, which is the exception rather than the rule. So normally there wouldn't be an interview, therefore there would be no interview fee. But I have to put it on here because if in the exceptional case that there is an interview, the applicant would be charged a fee. Um, however, if it was a desktop assessment, as um, we've discussed, 
The registration fee for RMP is £100 and the annual subscription fee is 55 Finally, RM Tech fees, £25 initial application fee, a £95 assessment fee. Ah, I didn't look at the competency document for you for RM Tech, uh, but it's a lower word count again too. Um, I think it's, we had three to 400 for um, CEM, two to 300 for RMFP, and one to 200 for RM Tech. So again, less words to assess, lower fee, £95. Registration fee is £80 and then um, a nice annual fee of uh, only £35 for that one. I hope very much, um, considering that this area um, of expertise is, is so prevalent in all industries, but not, not only in ours, but especially in ours, I hope that a lot of you will want to apply um, today. And with these two new levels of registrations available, um, it's actually very achievable. So if you're interested and want to apply, here's what you need to do. The web pages are fully launched. And again, you'll get these links after the session. They detail all the processes. There's video guides and absolutely everything you're going to need on each of these pages. We've got the overview page, the CM page, RMP page, and RM Tech page. You'll get um, full guidelines there. However, the first step, um, and what I'm encouraging you all uh, to do, is go to the relevant web page and find the initial. Assess, uh, the initial application and guidance document relevant to the level of registration you're interested in. Uh, get your CV, get the copy of your qualifications. Um, if you don't have one already, or you need to gear it um, towards reduce down some irrelevant stuff to include mainly environmental stuff, prepare the CPD, uh, prepare the, the future one year's PDP and send it over to us. SOCEMV, at cbuildy.com. We need to know your membership number and uh, obviously which level of registration you're applying for um, and, and we'll get you on the journey to an environmental registration and I do hope uh, we've got quite a few people here today and, and I hope that we uh, receive a lot of applications. Okay that's it from me um, talking wise but I'd be very keen uh, to hear from you. If you've got any questions, I'll do my best uh, to answer them. I'm not saying that I'll know all the answers, but I'll give it a go. Uh, so I'm going to hand back to Jordan uh, to facilitate that. Okay, so let me just have a quick look. See if we've got any questions. Okay, so this webinar will be uploaded to YouTube um, in the next couple of days so there will be a recording available. Okay, so then if you are a building control surveyor and CAVE member, what additional information would we need to provide to be considered for RMP? Considering most of what we do is related to energy saving and Part L compliance. Hi, Julian, um, Ian here. Uh, no, nothing additional other than what we've discussed today. So in your case, um, Julian, just uh, complete the initial application. Uh, and guidance document and supply the CV, CPD, PDP, copies of your qualifications, um, and we will get you assessed. And yeah, I, I definitely recognise that you're you're working within that space. Okay, so whilst no one likes things to be dumbed down, it seems to me that the requirements for a chartered status may actually be for the level of fellowship, the RMP for chartered status and technical level for practitioner. I fear setting the bar too high may prevent valuable experience from never getting to the 
The four. The four, you're right. A fellow Kiwi, hello, Craig. Um, Ian here, thanks very much for your question. Uh, just to confirm, our, we, we've got three chartered levels. Chartered member, chartered building engineer, fellow chartered building engineer. Chartered building engineer is at level seven. Um, so in terms of chartered environmentalists being at level seven, those are matched as well, of course, fellows seven, seven and above, um, we're being the most experienced within our industry. Okay. Are uh, there lists of acceptable degrees or is any bachelor's degree certified, albeit a non-construction discipline? Um, academic qualifications, once assessed, are assessed on their content relating to environmentalism. Um, so a degree in music, unfortunately, is not going to cut it. Okay. So they are all of the questions that we have been sent in. Um, so we'll wrap it up there. If anyone has any other questions, of course, you can email it to us. Oh. Oh, they're coming in now. Hang on, we've got a few more. Hi, I'm registered uh, at IFE. Yep, great. Uh, chartered building engineer, no formal environmental qualifications, and therefore uh, unsure what level would be appropriate. I'm responsible for strategic fire sector design of buildings, but the recognition of environmental issues within this is very underdeveloped. There's very little control over the final outcomes. Hi, Ron. Sorry, I was going off and I was thinking while reading there, Ron, um, very, very good question. Uh, the Society for the Environment are keen, and the reason that the point system is in place, they're very keen uh, and recognise that not all knowledge is gained by academic qualifications. Um, so I think the best thing to do is, would be to get in touch, and I'll get Jordan to uh, share out the contact details, get in touch so I can have a look um, in a bit more detail, like for example, at your CV and stuff, uh, and then I can, I can have a chat with you, Rom. Uh, what about degree in civil engineering? That would be um, that would be uh, determined on content. So we'd need to see your transcripts to see the um, units that are taken. I'm sure with civil engineering degree there'll be something on environmentalism in there from ones I've seen um, in the end. You're welcome, Craig. Thank you. Okay, so that is the end of the questions. So we'll wrap it up there. Of course, if anyone has any others, please just send them over to us via email or give the membership team a call. I'm sure they'll be happy to help wherever possible. Um, I just want to thank Ian for providing that for us this morning and thank everyone for coming online as well. Um, we do have another webinar next week. Um, Richard Harrell, our technical director, will be providing part two of the building safety bill. Um, so please do go and register for that. Part one is already up on YouTube. So if you have a chance to have a look over that, then that would obviously be beneficial. Um, any other questions that come in, I'll send over to Ian and he will get in touch with any responses. But thank you again for joining us and I'll see you online again very soon.